All right, so we're switching to cricket now on the Sportsmax Zone. As we head over to St. Kitts and Nevis, where Cricket West Indies Regional Women's T20 Blaze continued with a round two triple header at Warner Park earlier on Tuesday, the first of which saw defending champions Barbados bounce back from their opening day defeat to the Leeward Islands with a comfortable 19-run win over the Windward Islands. Well, 20-year-old Trishan Holder smashed 23 runs from the last 10 deliveries she faced to finish unbeaten on 68 and lift Barbados to 123 for 5 from their 20 overs. The Winwards, who lost wickets at regular intervals, were then restricted to 104 for 8 in their allotment. Skipper Afi Fletcher top scored for the Winwards with 28. Well, Vernon Springer, he joins us on Zoom now to discuss Holder's impressive innings and the Windward Islands disappointing run chase. Good afternoon, Vernon. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well also. So let's talk about the cricket. Of course, an exciting day of cricket. We also had the TNT Red Force Divas playing earlier today. They secured their win. So good stuff for them as well, Spring. But we're going to start with this Barbados win. What did you see from the cricketers today? And of course, let's assess how Barbados went about getting this win. Well, it's a new look Barbados team, and it's nice to see a 20-year-old come into the party. But I think when you look at the aspect of the T20 women's tournament so far, not a lot of innovation. It's almost the same carbon copy continuing from the 50-over competition, where when this, once the spinners come on, then everybody will get defensive and there's nobody really coming up with any craft to try anything different, whether we are switch it or look to get singles or find the gaps. Everybody just thinking about, you know, hitting the ball out of the ground. And I think that is one of the reasons why you've seen the scores being so low in the competition. Yeah, Trishan Holder, that 68 not out, of course, top scoring for Barbados. How did she go about this innings, Springer? And were you impressed in any way? Because what I'm getting from you in these interviews is that these girls are not impressing you. You're thinking that, you know, the regular um, players are, of course, coming to the forefront. And I know you want to see youngsters stepping up and doing some magic for us. Well, you have to fix the base first. Yeah. Um, and you, you only judge on what is happening on the base. So yeah. I don't really worry about the... Kashana Knights or the Haley Machos and company. You want to see, the, yeah, you want to see the Rashad Williams and company learning progress rate, and you want to see them improving. And sometimes I just feel that they're not learning fast enough based on how long they have been around the scenes. That's just my thought process. Yeah, I understand. But let's a quick word on Trisha and Holder and how she went about today. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a bright prospect. Let's hope that she can be consistent from now on. Um, we've got good stats. Let's hope that she can be able to build on that. She was creative today. So we'll wait and see what the next games go like. I don't want to start getting excited about one innings. Um, let, me, let me just watch and see what's going to happen for the rest of the tournament. Let's see how she shapes up against a Jamaica team. Um, and if she looks and she has the class against a Jamaica team, well, you know, you could start to be able to say that this is one for the future. Yeah. Uh, Vernon, we want to look at uh, the way the game progressed for both teams because the winners have been an improved women's outfit in the in well we saw it in the super 50 and we are seeing it now as well in the t20s and um the innings progression i was looking at it and i saw where the barbados team really took a stronger hold on the game between over seven and 15. Uh, that is where they really got a hold of the game because if you look at the winwards in in green their innings pro progression for the first uh, six overs was more promising than the Barbadians were. But you mentioned something about when the spinners came on and so on, that it changed the approach of the of the batters. So as we look at the innings progression there where the Barbadians in the middle overs took control, how do you how do you assess that as a from a strategy standpoint? But I think it comes down to planning lands, Mariah. Is how well you plan. And I'm just saying this Lance because I've got some inside sources in some areas in terms of how folks are coaching the women. We have to coach the women with the insight of 
un let them understand what is happening. What are the weaknesses? The weaknesses are, are the middle overs. So we got to be able to find an impact player or a pinch hitter who can go in there and upset the rhythm. If you look at most of the teams, lands, the big bowlers are the ones who are dominating in the middle overs. You need somebody to go in there and say, listen, we're going to upset the apple cart. You know, we're going to get more singles. We're going to get, you know, some boundaries or whatever. But I just get the impression, Lance, when you look at the cricket, once the top spinners come on or the top bowlers come on in the middle, everybody just defend. Nobody really wants to take a chance. Mm. I want to ask you about the Barbados team and the, 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 the makeup of the team because they struggled in the Super 50. They lost their opener in the T20 Blaze. They rebounded with a win today. But is it that this team is so um, much of a struggle without Haley Matthews? Because there are several West Indies players in this Barbados setup. The Knight sisters, um, Alia Aline, and you know several players who have international international experience. So we know that Haley Matthews is a, a is a, a a match winner. There's no question that the team is weaker without her. But is it that they are so much weaker without Haley Matthews? I think they are, you've hit the nail on the head. The last point that you said, they're so much weaker. And it's maybe an area of concern, I'm sure, for the folks in Barbados in terms of how they're developing the women's game in Barbados. They maybe need a serious program. And not only Barbados, Lance, but maybe throughout the entire Caribbean. You're, one would also have to look at Jamaica. If you take away Henry and Taylor from Jamaica team, you will maybe get the same results that you're getting with a Barbados team. Mm. Yeah, I, I take the point. There is a, a young spinner, Erin Dean, who picked up two for 12 today. Um, what were your thoughts on her um, getting an opportunity as a rookie coming in? Bright future. Um, I guess we need to see more of those young players coming through because Cricket West Indies has been spending a lot of money on development camps, be it under 19 or folks coming out of the A-team. Those youngsters, when they go back to respective franchises, must be given an opportunity to exhibit their skills. And that is why Lance and Mariah have been calling and saying that maybe for the women's game, we need to have four franchises based on the quality of women cricketers that we have. Four franchises made up of 20 women each, which would include six or seven at least under 19 players. So you begin to build a base within that franchise system. We maybe just need to go down to a franchise system and rather than we have Jamaica and Leewards and Winwards, just create a franchise for the women's tournament for the next two, three year cycle. Yeah, not a bad suggestion, of course, for none. But we're going to turn now to the day's second encounter where the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force Divas also bounced back with a nine wicket win over the Leeward Islands, who were restricted to 78 for six after winning the toss and electing to bat. Now, the TNT Divas then got to the target in 11.4 overs at 79 for one. So, of course, after a disappointing Super 50 tournament, Springer, it must feel good for the Red Force Divas to, of course, finally pick up that win. What did they do differently today? Well, the scores were low. And if you look at Trinidad and Tobago's first game against Guyana, they only scored 66 all out of 18.3 overs. So that is also a major concern for them in terms of their batting. Now, the Leewards um, didn't turn up to the party today. Um, you realize maybe they're still in basking from their victory over the defending champions, but they certainly can play a lot better cricket than that. And so they'll go back to the drawing board and realize like, hey, we fell down today in our batting. Trinidad and Tobago, um, yes, they won by nine wickets, but I think it is a, is a bat batting is the major concern for the Trinidad and Tobago team. And it's something I feel that they have to address. I don't know how they will address it, but it's a concern. Yeah, and of course, the Leewards today, to me, I have to say, I, I get the point about the Trinidad and Tobago batting because I have the same sentiments, of course, spring out that, you know, the TNT batting has been failed, failing them match after match because even when the bowlers come out and, of course, put on a good bowling performance, there are not enough runs to defend. And even if they put on some runs, you know, it's just not enough to get them over the line. But today, I think I saw something very similar from the Leewards. You spoke about that low score. Um, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force were able to, of course, bowl them out 78 for six. And I have to say, I expected better from this Leewards team with the bat. Yeah, well, it's in patches. And the, the, the biggest cycle for the Leeward Islands women team is that they won their first game ever in the competition, be it Super 50 or T20. 
And sometimes, Mariah, you just have to understand how to win. Yeah. Um, losing is a habit. And they won their first game against Barbados. I think they will rebound back in the competition. They just didn't turn up today. So, like I said, they're ba basking. Jazara Claxton is moving through in leaps and bounds. She's been a graduate from the under-19 program into the West Indies 18 program. So you can see progress from her. I still feel that some of the senior players in the Leeward Islands women team, including the captain Amanda Edwards, Shanisha Hector, who's just come back from a stint in Australia, they got to be consistent all the time because the younger players like Claxton and Kimberly Anthony, and they're looking to those senior players. And sometimes I look at the captaincy role, even in the bowling, and I just find that too many people are bowling. Yeah. They need to come up with a set plan. If, we, if it's five, these five bowlers you're going to use, then you use these five bowlers. You look in most of the teams, Windward Islands, Ghana, you name it, almost everybody's bowling. So I'm saying that is the strategy that I'm talking about. Come with a game plan and stick to the game plan. Come up with a strategy and execute it. Yeah. Well, let's see how they go about the rest of the matches. And you know what's exciting is today's final game and certainly the round's most anticipated matchup. We'll see Jamaica and Guyana locking horns at the same venue in a few minutes' time. And both teams you think are... anybody can, you think anybody can stop Jamaica from completing the double? Because I realized the last time I made a prediction, I have not seen my compatriot today. So maybe I don't know if you or Lance want to take me up that Jamaica will certainly win the T20 as well. Well, I mean, it's a no-brainer <laughs> spring. It's not like you have a big, big um thing to get because Jamaica looks really strong with Stefani Taylor and Chanel Henry. Yeah, but, but, but Vernon, why is it a no-brainer and Ghana beat Jamaica in the Super 50? Uh, 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 the, thank you very much, Lance. So I couldn't understand why she, why, why, she, why she got so defensive. I thought she was to tell me that Trinidad would upset um, Jamaica, but no, she has, but she has I, conceded already. No, I have not conceded. My sister is captain in the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, so I will be supporting the Red Force and, of course, her. But what I'm trying to say is it's easy for you to choose the Jamaica Scorpions because that's just the easy route. <laughs> I love that one, Maria. I love that. I love that, Mariah. All right. <laughs> now, for that for that reason, Springer, we'll chat on the next show. I want to thank you so much, of course, for chatting with us and, you know, giving your analysis week after week. And we'll talk again. A lot more cricket. So, you can come up with... So, with... so, so before you before you go, let's let's work out the placings. Where you think Trinidad and Tobago will fit in the T20? So, let me hear your predictions. I would love for them to come first. It would be a great start to my sister's captaincy. That's what I want. Okay, and if they don't come first, what where, where, where you wanna come? Springer, time up. <laughs> <laughs> ne next show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs>